Speak your mind on BBC Radio 5 Live. The long-lost son finally returns, but in the process triggers some shocking revelations. Uncomfortable family business here on BBC One in half an hour. In our modern world, advances in technology are changing how we look at everything, including animals. And it's animals that are inspiring many of our smartest high-tech gadgets. In the future, what was once the realm of science fiction will soon become science fact. Cities and towns across the world were being watched. And it's not just us. Surveillance cameras, satellites and radar also monitor those animals that we share our lives with. We're going to show you some amazing new developments that are transforming the way we look at nature. In this series, we've already seen how onboard cameras are revealing what it's like to fly like a bird. But that's not all these tiny, lightweight cameras do. They're giving us an animal's eye view from underwater, too. For the first time, we can really share the thrills and spills of their world. And these tiny spies in the sky are now helping uncover some surprising facts about one of our most familiar city neighbours. You may not think that pigeons are the brightest birds, but that's where you'd be wrong. Could you find your way home in unfamiliar territory without a map? Probably not. So how do pigeons do it? Well, using some very special pigeons like Whitey here and an onboard camera, with a microwave transmitter, we're going to find out. But before we can do that, I've got to get these guys lost. No peeping now. Scientists already know that pigeons have an inbuilt compass. But is there more to their navigation skills than that? To find out, I'm first going to disorientate them. We also know that pigeons use the sun to judge direction, so the fact that it's a dull day may help to make their life harder too. While Whitey acts as a cameraman, another pigeon carries a GPS, allowing us to track the bird's flight path from space. 
global positioning system, receives signals transmitted from satellites and uses them to pinpoint its exact location. Amazingly, it can pick up radio signals from satellites 20,000 kilometers above the Earth's surface. Using four of those satellites, it can then calculate its position to the nearest meter. Oh, by the way, in case you're worried, this thing is completely harmless. It's attached to a very snug harness on the pigeon's back, and it weighs less than one of his average meals. There we go, little man. Just get that back on. Right. So, with all the pre-flight checks completed, time to fly away home. As Whitey flies with the flock, the little onboard camera is beaming a microwave transmission back to this satellite dish here, which I can review on this monitor. We've released them five miles from their loft, and remember, we disorientated them in the car earlier, so they shouldn't have a clue where they are. Let's see if they can find their way home. Here we are, a real pigeon's eye view. Whoa, I hope they don't get airsick. As I said, they have a built-in compass, and they're also guided by the sun. But will the GPS uncover other navigation aids as well? We'll come back later to see how Whitey and his mates get on. The latest innovations in camera technology aren't only being used to give us bird's eye views, they're also being used to spy on us. This is dog cam. Great for close-ups of other dogs or tracking down the nearest tasty snack. Here we go. Oh. But these canine cameras have a serious future too. Meet Harry. He's a video rescue dog. Harry's being trained to search for people trapped beneath collapsed buildings or by avalanches. He uses his nose to find them and his onboard camera relays images back to the rescue services. Now many cameras are becoming more available, video dogs will be a common sight at disaster scenes. So in the future, seeing through a dog's eyes may save countless lives. But the latest camera technology not only allows us to see worlds out of reach, but also beyond our senses. Most cameras, like this one we're using now, see objects and colour very much like our eyes. But as scientists build better and more sensitive cameras, they're finding out there's more to light than meets the eye. As we saw earlier in the series, some cameras view the world in weird and wonderful ways. This ultraviolet camera can see patterns that are invisible to our eyes, and others can even see heat. This thermal camera is so sensitive it can pick up the heat radiating from my body and detect differences in temperature of less than a twentieth of a degree. There are even X-ray cameras that can see inside chameleons and egg-eating snakes. But this one is really amazing. This camera, coming to an airport near you, actually sees through clothes. This special camera takes pictures using millimetre waves, which pass straight through clothing, so it can spot a concealed weapon or explosives. In the future, biologists might be able to spy on animals hidden underground. Animal technology has been the inspiration for some of our most cutting-edge ideas. Dolphins use sonar to find fish buried beneath the sand. Seeing with sound like this is also useful when the water's murky and you can't see your flipper in front of your face. Now human engineers have developed an acoustic camera that works in the same way as the dolphin's sonar. 
the acoustic camera bounces 96 sonar beams off an underwater object to form a picture out of sound. This camera has been used by the US Navy to detect enemy mines or divers in dark or cloudy water. Here it is, focused on divers five meters away. And when these fish disappear into muddy water, this camera cuts through the murk, giving scientists unique insights into a world that was once invisible. And it's all thanks to what dolphins have been doing naturally. And it's not just our newfangled cameras that are helping us to spy on animals. We're now using technology that is quite literally out of this world. Satellites. Now you wouldn't expect this BMW to have anything to do with elephants. But that's why you'd be wrong. And we've got to steal it to show you how. OK, so I'm not really stealing the car. But I am on an exercise with the South African police. So fasten your seatbelts. Satellite trackers for expensive cars have been around for some time, but now they're even more foolproof. Now police can control the vehicle remotely from space, cutting the engine and locking the doors. <laughs> it's a fair cop. <laughs> but what's this got to do with elephants? Well, the same technology is also making it easier to keep up with the herd. An elephant weighs up to seven tons and stands up to 13 feet tall. Not an easy animal to lose, you might think. Well, elephants can travel hundreds of miles and in forest or thick bushland, an individual is very difficult to spot. So scientists had the excellent idea of giving them the same tracking box as on cars. <laughs> The box beams information to satellites, then it's downloaded, showing the box's location and speed. Fixing the box to a jumbo-sized collar means scientists can follow the elephants anywhere. Hey, how are we doing? And that's a blessing for people like Ian Douglas Hamilton, who's an elephant expert. Hi, Dee. Nice to see you again. Today we're in South Africa, looking for a big bull male called Mac. Using the GPS data, it doesn't take us long to find Mac's herd, but tracking him down in this bushy landscape is a different story. The GPS is telling us he's round here somewhere but in such a bushy landscape, it's almost impossible to see him. We can actually see elephants, but we can't tell whether it's our elephant. We're just getting so many little glimpses. At last, it's him. But just a moment's clear view. Then he melts into the bush again. Because imagine trying to track this elephant 24 hours a day, seven days a week in this. You just can't do it. But now the scientists can follow Mac's every move remotely. And it's not only Mac. Satellite technology has revolutionised the study of elephant behaviour. Scientists have collared elephants all over Africa, and they can now monitor them from anywhere in the world. I'm off back to England to see how it works. All I need is an internet cafe, a cup of coffee, and the elephants should be just a click away. Because the information from the satellite is being directly to the internet, if you know the address and the secret password, 
you can actually just log on. The password has to be kept secret to stop poachers from logging on. There we go. Mac is residing somewhere in South Africa and if we zoom in we'll be able to take a look at exactly where. As you can see Mac has been tearing around the countryside and just dipped inside Kruger National Park where there happens to be a female in season. For the first time scientists can now see exactly where an individual elephant is going. This map shows another male doing his own surveillance pursuing two females around a game park in Kenya. It's breeding season and the bulls are trying to track down a mate. The same reason why Mac's been putting in so much legwork. Like the police controlling the stolen car, scientists can reprogram the collar via satellites to transmit every minute, hour or day to really follow in elephants' footsteps and they'll be able to do it all from the comfort of their own office. Over the next few years, scientists are planning to spy on more animals from space than ever before, in many different habitats. Three quarters of our planet is covered in water, perhaps the most difficult place to infiltrate. Water is home to some of our most mysterious and endangered animals, like the blue whale. Bigger than two buses, but in an entire ocean, extremely hard to find. One project beginning in the Pacific is putting satellite tags on hundreds of marine animals in a unique experiment that should tell us more about life in the ocean. They're attached to the animal's body by a harmless dart. The tags transmit information about the water temperature and the whale's depth, distance and speed via a satellite to the scientist's computer. It's hard to protect whales when you know so little about them. The tags will give the scientists vital information and hopefully solve one of the biggest mysteries of all. Where blue whales go to mate and give birth. But satellite technology isn't the only way of tracking animals. Radar is being used to solve a mystery about one of England's most familiar summer birds. Swifts migrate over 4,000 miles from Africa to England every summer. They spend almost all of their life in the air. It's just a few minutes before sunset and the Swifts are gathering for the night. In about 10 minutes they'll have totally disappeared. When darkness falls, most birds head off to roost in a tree or on a building. But swifts simply vanish into thin air. So where do they go? Here's a clue. Back in the 1950s, air traffic control saw what they described as angels on their radar screens. Could these heavenly sightings be linked to the swifts' nightlife? The truth is out there, and modern radar is helping us to find it. Swifts can be identified by radar because of their characteristic wing beat. Take a look at this. One, two, three, four, five, six, glide. So now we can identify them, we can track them at night and find out exactly where they go. Amazingly they fly up to 10,000 feet in the pitch black where they circle all night, most likely sleeping on the wing. 
the radar angels of the 1950s were snoozing swifts. But tracking one swift to 10,000 feet is only the start of it. Now the latest radar systems follow entire flocks as they migrate thousands of kilometers. So pigeons should be no problem. Remember Whitey and his mates? Let's find out how they're getting on. And I'm going to need another bit of technology to keep up. The first thing the birds do is circle, using their inbuilt compass and the sun to get their bearings. There. Where's he going? Straight across. He's going to come across. Oh, there we go. Over the tee. Then they head off in the general direction of the loft. But our camera pigeon is taking a rather unexpected detour. Are you trying to shake us off? No, he's turned away. Where's he going? Good picture still. He's flying straight to the road, which is uh, it's not the direction he wants to go. To get, oh, look at that! That is amazing. He's just gone straight up to the road, and he's just following the road now. Oh, he's decided to peel off the road, and now back onto the roundabout. Now, where's he going to go from here? At the roundabout, he seems to get confused and goes around twice before he chooses the right exit. On down the A40. Seems to be happier now, made a bit more purpose. You can actually see the road in his camera really clearly. That is amazing. It's a... incredible. That's it now. Oh, he's taking a bit of Whitey a seems to be using human landmarks as a guide, it's although it's not the quickest way. That road. At some point, he's going to have to go right. He's just taken a right at that juncture and followed the other road, and that's kind of heading in the right place now. Now he's going straight. <laughs> that is amazing. And now he's following another lane. And this lane takes him to a farm not far from the loft. He's on the home straight. His cosy loft is beckoning. So, back goes the phrase as the crow flies. Oh, there we go. He's getting very close now. Skimming over the buildings. Very close to the loft. He can see... Oh, there you go. He's landed. He's back home. So, a pigeon's compass isn't pinpoint accurate, and the sun can't be totally relied on. Obviously, landmarks are perfect to tell you exactly where you need to go. We do it, and pigeons seem to do it too. Who's a clever boy then? Well, our technology lets us spy on animals, but it's often the animals who give us our inspiration in the first place. I'm here in an English suburban garden, waiting for some animals that could drastically change our lives. Slugs. Now slugs aren't many people's favourite animals. They invade your garden, devastate your vegetables and all they leave is that slimy trail. But believe it or not, scientists are now trying to decipher this sticky mess. It may be goo to us, but scientists now realise that slug slime holds important messages.
It tells other slugs details about the owner's sexual state, where it's been and where it's going. Vital information in the world of garden politics. Incredibly, working out how slime molecules store and pass on data may one day lead to a brand new generation of supercomputers. Computers with memories carrying the data of a million CD-ROMs, all in the space of a coin. Dwell on that the next time you reach for the slug pellets. Analyzing animals in microscopic detail is changing our lives in other ways too. Scanning electron microscopes allow us to see stunning natural designs, and these are being copied in our architecture, art and product design. This stuff is shark skin. It helps make sharks fast and streamlined in the water. These groove scales, or denticles, help the water flow smoothly around the body. They reduce drag by preventing eddies coming into contact with the surface and minimize turbulence. And if you're an Olympic swimmer, imitation shark skin has the edge over your own. This swimsuit is covered in tiny V-shaped ridges mimicking the microscopic scales that cover the shark's skin. In the future, this ultra-streamlined design is earmarked to be used on the hulls of super yachts, and all because we can now see the tiniest details of our world. So if advances in electron microscopy can spark off new designs, and if slugs can be the inspiration for high-tech computers, new technology will open up a whole new world of animal research. A world where cockroaches with mini cameras will turn into military spies. Fly on the wall documentaries will be filmed by the fly on the wall. Soaring birds of prey will help us design more flexible aeroplane wings. And this little chap may be the next 007. The gecko is a small tropical lizard that climbs up walls and walks across the ceiling without falling off. But how? The secret's in their fancy footwork. And once again, we can only see how it works through a powerful electron microscope. The soles of gecko's feet are blanketed in minuscule hairs upon hairs. They grip onto any surface, even glass. And as the gecko moves, it simply peels a foot off and sticks it back on. Today, engineers inspired by gecko's hairy feet are making Robo Gecko, designed to be the last word in surveillance operations. Traditionally, robots moved on wheels, but that's all changing thanks to blueprints drawn from animal design. Birds may help engineers design legs that are strong, but lightweight. Robots based on snakes and insects may be best for transporting cameras through sand or dust. Animal-inspired technology, radar, satellites and high-tech cameras they're all giving us a new view of life on our planet. The technology to help us preserve this life while we still can. So, so that's what the future holds. Technology and nature working together. Crocodiles, lizards and venomous snakes don't exactly get a good press, but their survival abilities are way ahead of other creatures. Dragons Alive is a new series next Wednesday at 8, here on BBC One.
this to us? Are we prepared for the future? We have got a right to protect our residents. If the gap between rich and poor widens. Gated communities tap in to deep-seated fear of others, fear of crime. The drama is fiction, but the issue is real. It's becoming almost an apartheid out of rich and poor. I fear for the future. If things don't get better, next, over on BBC Two, it's your wake-up call. Two very different detectives. We have no real forensic evidence and no prints apart from the victims. DC Barbara Havers requests immediate assistance. Did you mean to harm her or did you just lose your temper? What is this? Inspector Linley, tomorrow at 8 on BBC One. And later tomorrow here on BBC One, unearthing a medieval burial site in East London. It's a life of grime at 9.30. James, 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 James. A bit of advice about Oxford. I want to offer you a reward. A reward of £100,000 for the safe return of my James. Couldn't you just say that my son ran away because his mother's having an affair with his teacher? You can't stand this new house without James in. James! James! Please! Tomorrow, I'm going to make a sign. Something like, James, we love you. Come home. James? James!